Hey guys, Chase from Raider Robotics here. Today we're going to be going ahead and setting up and tuning your robot for Roadrunner. If you haven't already downloaded Roadrunner, there is a video that I made right here. In order for Roadrunner to properly apply the right acceleration and speed values, we have to tune our robot because all robots have different weights and accelerations and drags and frictions and all sorts of stuff like that. Our robot uses mechanum wheels for driving and two dead wheels as its sensors, so if you don't have something exactly like this, the steps will be a little different. So please be sure to reference the Roadrunner documentation if you don't have the same setup. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is choose between mechanum drive and tank drive based on the motors and wheels that we have on our robot. Our robot Simon has mechanum wheels. So you'll be using the Mechanum Drive for the rest of this Roadrunner tuning. Now that we've decided which type of wheels we're going to be using, we are going to open up the Mechanum Drive file. If you're using Tank Drive, you open up the Tank Drive file, and most of the steps here are going to be the same. From here, you're then going to choose your orientation of the IMU and its logo and USB facing direction. All right, here's our robot, Simon. Our IMU. USB is facing to the left of the robot, and the logo is facing forward from the robot. It looks right here, but you should do it in the orientation of the robot itself, so facing kind of like this way. Now that we've went ahead and updated the IMU facing directions, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the tuning op modes variable is correct for our drive class. As you can see here, mine is on mechanumdrive.class, which is the class I'm using, but if you were to use tank drive, you would replace this mechanum drive with a tank drive. Next, go back to your drive class, mine is the mechanum drive, and scroll down till about 248, line 248. You should find a localizer equals new drive localizer pose. We're going to replace this with our method of sensing and encoding. Simon is using dead wheels as his encoder, which I'll show in a minute, so that's what we're going to use here. Here's Simon again. Here are where our dead wheels are. We have a dead wheel right here, this um, perpendicular X one, and we have our Odo Y wheel here, our parallel. The goal with placing these dead wheels is to keep them as close as possible to the vertical and horizontal sections of the robot, like in that plus. However, we decided to keep our lift system in the middle, as you can see, so we had to move this X wheel a little bit more forward. This doesn't change anything though, because Roadrunner will fix this in the tuning. All we're going to do here is replace this drive localizer with a two dead wheel localizer where we pass in the hardware map, our lazy IMU dot get, params dot in per tick, and then our pose. If you were using something like a three dead wheel localizer or a different type of localizer, it should roughly look the same, it just might have some different parameters that you need to pass. While we're down here, we might as well change some of these motor names to the proper ones that you use in your configuration. So as you can see, it automatically defaults the motor names of your driving wheels to left front, left back, right back, and right front. If you have a bunch of other programs that are using configurations that depend on something that is not named left front, left back, then you can change it all right here. As well, make sure that your IMU name is correct. If you haven't changed your IMU name or don't even know what I'm talking about, then you don't have to worry about this. But if you want to change it, it's going to be in your robot's configuration, in your control hub, and within one of the serial buses. Now that our motor names are changed and the IMU name is changed if needed, we will now move to the robot where we will first enable FTC dashboard, and then we will start tuning. In order to enable FTC dashboard, you need to go to your controller hub, Go to your manual op modes, find the enable slash disable dashboard, click in it, then click start. It should show dashboard is currently enabled, press start, and then you're done. If it says that the dashboard is currently enabled, then you don't have to do anything else. If you couldn't find the enable or disable dashboard op mode in your list, then it's probably because you haven't built your code to the robot with Android Studio. So please make sure to do that as it's really important for upcoming steps as well. FTC dashboard is a really helpful tool that not only allows us to run op modes on our computer without using a control hub, 
but also allows us to access a lot of graphs that give us helpful information and variables for Roadrunner tuning that we can use on the robot. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to tune a robot with mechanum drive and dead wheels, specifically two of them. However, robots can have different amounts of dead wheels, or they can be using encoders, or even tank drive or mechanum drive. So I'm going to walk through the steps for each different avenue, and then I'm specifically going to show mechanum drive with two dead wheels. So for tank drive, you're going to be using the forward push test, angular ramp logger, manual feed forward tuner, and manual feedback tuner as your op modes that you need to use. For mechanum drive, you'll be using mechanum direction debugger, forward push test, angular ramp logger, manual feed forward tuner, and manual feedback tuner. I'm also going to put in here what you'd need for each one if you had dead wheels or if you had encoders. All right, so here we are with our first test it is the mechanum direction debugger. Essentially, this has mapped all four driving motors to different buttons on the D-pad. So A being the back left motor, X being the top left, Y being the top right, and B being the bottom right. It's as if you rotated the gamepad like so. So as you can see, the left side of these motors is moving in the wrong direction, and the right side is moving in the proper direction. They should all be moving forward. So what we're going to have to do is go into the code and fix this. If you remember, we were having problems with our left front and left back motors. So we're gonna go ahead and reverse the left front motor. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this just so I can replace the left back motor. And yeah, that's all you need to do here. Go ahead and make sure you build. All right, now that we've changed the directions of those two motors, we should try and test it. So that back left is now moving forward. The back right is still moving forward. That front left motor is also moving forward now, and same with that front right. Now that we have properly checked this, we can now move to the next step. Our next step is checking the debug dead wheel program. When I push Simon forward, his parallel dead wheel value should increase, which it does. And when I push Simon to the left, his perpendicular dead wheel value should increase. As you can see, the dead wheel value actually decreases when he gets pushed left, which means that the perpendicular dead wheel is inverted. Let's change that. All we have to do is go to the two dead wheel localizer file, scroll down to about line 56 where you see this to do, change it to the correct dead wheel that you want to change, and make sure that that DC motor simple is imported. And please, please, please remember to build. Now that we've changed these settings, let's go back and retest it. So the parallel dead wheels, when I push forward, do increase, and when I push it back, it decreases like it's supposed to. When I push the robot left, the perpendicular dead wheels now increase and then decrease when pushed right. So both my dead wheels are working, and it's now time to move to the next step. Here we are with the forward push test program. I've lined Simon up with the corners of the tiles, as you can see, and I'm now going to push him forward directly in a mount. Each tile is 24 inches, so I've decided to push him 72 inches. You can push him more or less, it doesn't really matter. After you've pushed him your amount, we will take the inches that he's traveled and then divide it by the amount of ticks shown in the FTC dashboard. After running this program on the FTC dashboard, you should see in the telemetry that we have the ticks traveled. We're now going to go to a calculator to do a little bit of calculations. As you can see, all I'm doing here is taking the inches, 72, and then dividing it by that ticks traveled that I found, the 24,000. I'm now going to take about anywhere between 10 to 16 of the decimals, you can do more or less, and I'm going to copy that directly into the in per tick value. You should see it in the mechanum drive or tank drive at around line 65. Remember, once again, to build that program. All right, here's where it starts to get fun. We're going to do the forward ramp test now. It is going to simply move the robot forward and you can stop it as soon as it gets to the limit of your boundaries. After that test, you're gonna go back to FTC dashboard and type in your IP slash tuning slash forward dash ramp dot HTML. This is going to bring you to a graph where when you press the latest, it'll be mostly linear. From here, we're going to take sections of these values that are extraneous, either too far away from this line of best fit or don't make sense at all, and we're just going to press E to exclude them. You can just go ahead and drag and then press E.
From here, we're going to take the two values in the top right, the KV and the KS, and we're going to copy paste them into the Android Studio Drive class that you have. It should be around lines 71 and 72. Remember to save this program and build it. Our next step is this lateral ramp logger test. It's simply going to drive the robot towards the left. If it curves, that's okay. After that test is done, we're going to go ahead and go to the IP that we have slash tuning slash lateral dash ramp dot HTML. This is going to bring us up to three parameters that we have to put in, our in per tick, our KS, and our KV. So go ahead and put those in. You should once again see a, another graph for our lateral ramp regression. We're just going to take the extraneous out of this once again. Now in this situation, the graph doesn't exactly fit, fit the best line of fit, but that's because it's at a y-intercept of zero, but I'm still gonna keep it the same. Now save and build your program. Our next step is gonna be this uh, angular ramp test where all it's gonna do is spin it in a circle. It doesn't have any endpoints because it doesn't move, so you can just stop it whenever you'd like. Now that we've done that test, we're gonna go back to the uh, IP address slash tuning slash dead wheel angular ramp .html and go ahead and put in our KV and KS. All right, after you click update and click latest, we'll see another linear graph of our data. This one was a little bit more spread out for me, so I went and took a little bit more time to cut out some of the extraneous, but yeah, go ahead and do that once again. After you've cut your extraneous out, go ahead and copy that track width and paste it back into your code. There are also two different graphs at the bottom for the perpendicular and parallel in ticks. So go ahead and do the same regression and extraneous for that, and then copy those values into your localizer. After those graphs, remember to save and build. All right, most of these have been just testing one thing, checking a graph, and then copying and pasting some values. But for these next two programs, we're gonna have to do a lot of the testing ourselves. As you can see, I'm lining Simon up again with the tiles, and in the FTC dashboard, I am changing the manual feed forwarder tuner distance to 48 inches, as I'd like it to only go about two tiles before going back. What we're going to change here is this KA value in the manual drive or the tank drive. What I'd suggest is starting at a really no, low number at about 0 0.00001 or anything around there and slowly increasing it by factors of 10 until it starts to do something. As you can see at zero, nothing really changes, but as I start to ramp it up, you'll see that it reacts a little bit more. It is important to know that you don't have to worry about the robot kind of going askew, as you can see here, rotating away. These are things that we will iron out in the next program, but all you have to do is go ahead and stop this program and then rerun it again and redirect them. You can also see when I put it to 1,000th of KA, Simon got a little bit hasty and ran off. So you can tell that it's starting to do something, but now we have to sort of drive it back in, reset it, and then keep working a little bit more to find that perfect distance. What we're trying to do is get it to go to exactly 48 inches and then drive exactly 48 inches back. As you can tell from here, my 0 0.0015 is starting to get a lot closer as he's really stopping and then coming back, and it's a lot more rigid and static, as you can tell. Um, now you just kind of have to push it a little bit more. Everyone's values will be different, so it's not like you putting 0 0.0013 will change it properly for you. Uh, just make sure that you use your own values and work on it plenty of times to reel it into something that looks good. Once done, make sure to go back into your program, save under the KA, and build. Our final program that we'll have to run is going to be this manual feedback tuner. What we're trying to change here is the axial, heading, and lateral gains, as well as their velocity gains if we're feeling a little more complicated. 
All we're going to do is move the robot forward and back in amount. I chose 48 inches. And we are going to change how much um, the gains or the P's of the PIDs essentially of these motors are going to work. So the axial is going to be for forward, heading is going to be for its rotation, and then lateral is going to be for its left and right movement. As you can see, increasing the axial heading or lateral gain is going to help it push back to where it's supposed to be. However, you need to be careful as giving it too much gain will put it in this wave where it drives way too fast to get to the point that it wants to go, and then will drive way too fast to go back just a little bit and get stuck in this wave where you see a lot of jittering that isn't really safe or takes a lot of voltage as well. If you're feeling a little bit more fancy, you can also use the velocity gains. I dip into this a little bit, but I'm not as experienced with it, where it will sort of see how fast the robot is going and how far away it needs to be, and it'll slow the robot down to slowly get to the correct position. This is really good for making your robot run autonomous very, very smooth, so I'd highly suggest once you get a good firm grasp on this uh, feedback and do it a few more times that you go ahead and try because it'll make your autonomous a lot better. The uh, next fun part of this is actually messing with your robot. So what I want you to do is go ahead and try and push it a little bit, maybe try and pull on it and rotate it, and you should try and see if the robot will properly uh, react to what you're doing to it and try and fix itself and stay on that straight line. As you can see, a lot of what I was doing was actually working, so we're getting to a really good point where all of my feedback is starting to line up correctly. After you've decided that your values are good enough, please go ahead and go back into your drive, go around to line 80, and update all of your axial, lateral, and heading gains. Now that we've taken all the required steps, we're just gonna go through and look and see everything that we've changed. So we've changed our IMU logo facing directions and USB facing directions. We have changed our input tick values, lateral input tick values, the track width in ticks, our KS, KV, and KA, the axial lateral and heading gains, of course the velocity gains if we've decided to mess with those. We have changed our motor names if needed, as well as our IMU names. We've also changed the directions of the DC motors if they were required, and we have set up our localizer, that being my two dead wheel localizer. From there, in our two dead wheel localizer, we have changed the parallel Y and ticks and the perpendicular Y and ticks, as well as setting our perpendicular direction to reverse. All right, congrats. You have now completely tuned your robot. Uh, just a reminder that this is not a one-stop shop, and you should be probably tuning your robot a lot of times, especially when you make any changes to the robot in terms of its hardware. It is very important that you keep on constantly tuning your robot if you see any deficiencies. So get used to this, and make sure you get good at it, because you'll probably have to do it a good few more times. But yeah, this is about it for tuning. You may now go into making your first Roadrunner program, which you can use my next video for. But uh, yeah, enjoy guys. I'll see you in the next one.